Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another production breakdown, slightly long overdue. Uh, we're back because uh, we have a new album coming out. It's called Outlast. It's out on June 3rd, depending on when you watch this. You've either heard it or you're waiting for it. If you are waiting for it, uh, we just thought we'd pass the time by uh, doing one of the breakdowns of a song that we've released already. It's called The Bombay Doors. Uh, with me today is Adil and JJ. How's it going, guys? Hi. Hello. What's up? Uh, well. Where are you all streaming from, uh, respectively? Uh, I'm streaming from my house, from my room. Cool. I'm streaming from Island City Studios, uh, my house, my room. <laughs> ah, great. Okay, cool. So Island City is where we did most of the work for this, uh, for this song and this album as well. But a lot of the album was made exactly this way, which is on Zoom and, yeah. and recorded in, in our homes and this is at the studio. Uh, we wanted to tackle this song because I thought it would be really interesting because there's a lot of lot of stuff going on on this song. In fact, we were even criticized for too much happening in this song. And I think, uh, fuck that. <laughs> because, uh, um, hey, hey, don't say I, fuck. I, it's fine. Okay. I, I really love this song and I, and I think it had to be made this way. It, it's reflective of, uh, of what the song is about. If you want to know more about that, we did another song, uh, another video called Behind the Bombay Doors. Uh, but the song is really about, uh, uh, yeah, a conceptual kind of chaos of Bombay, oh, okay. and it's about, uh, you know, it's about like how many, how how many different people come to the city every single year and try and make it and try and survive and stuff. So we really wanted the song to reflect that. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts when I brought the song to you in the beginning? I did like it. Great. Uh, that was my first thought. <laughs> uh, the I, I remember it the that the fourth pam 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 the pam pam. That was like something that you were playing when we were kind of finishing up the first album. I mean, the first album. Yeah, make it yeah, happen. A- yeah, and and yeah. and it's always super exciting to hear something new when you've been working on something for like two, three years. Yeah. Now there's so many things for the next album that I'm hearing while we were working on a- Bombay Doors. So, but it was like it it had these like offbeat hits and it was like a nice syncopation. So from a drum, like from just like from parts perspective, I thought, cool, this could be like a cool, dancey, funky kind of song. And then the directions that it's gone in after that, it'll with like that little bridge in the middle and the outro, we're just not expecting that. Yeah. Um, I think it still retained its original kind yeah, of dance. Very much. Yeah. Very much. It's, it is the main part of the song is what it was. Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, and and yeah, I think just the syncopated parts, all the synth work that has been uh, done. There's so many people who are on the song. Yeah, uh, Reese, mm. Sebastian, Ramon, James, Rohan, uh, Malika. So many people who have kind of contributed to this. But uh, I think the core of the 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 song, which is the bass and the drums, uh, are right here. So mm. uh, let's go through the song and um, see what we find. <laughs> Sometimes I love the smell of India The times it tries to bring me down Yeah, so, um, you know, I just, uh, the, the, the main thing I remember about that start is that it was so much longer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I think one day in the edit, we were just like, because it was, it used to start like, chikaka, chikaka, chikaka. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a long intro and and one day in the edit, no, one day while I was mixing it, it was like I was listening to it and I kept having to go to the verse one marker here constantly. And it was like, it was like uh, from, from the beginning to that verse one, there was like a lot happening. It was like and I was 20 just like, seconds of just Yeah, like, and I was just waiting for the music. song to start and it yeah. was like, wait, but why? I mean, that's a cool thing to do live. I mean, that's, that's a... It's an interesting intro to do live. You can vamp yeah. over it. You can talk over it. Somebody can solo over it. But like, yeah. this is a good enough introduction to the song. I mean, yeah, it gives you... Yeah, straight to the point. And I think that's yeah. been the, the thing of the entire album. A lot of it is just really, really concise this time as opposed to the last one. So this one was just like, man, what if we just cut out all of that shit? <laughs> just... <laughs> because we want to put some other shit in the end. That's why. That's true. Yeah. That is true. The it song is, is a... already five and a half. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to say like the song has a lot of sections in it. It's not a very predictable structure at all, which mm-hmm. is kind of cool about it. No, no, I mean, yeah. th- this album specifically has a lot of like three bridge songs and <laughs> two bridge songs and stuff like that. that right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. But that. somehow but, this album is still shorter, like, you know, like, yeah, it relatively, is. It, is. it is a little tighter. Uh, but if I look at, if I look at like the structure of the song, since we're talking about it right yeah. here. Uh, Oof, you got like, names. Yeah. There's uh, V1, yeah. So, huh, yeah, there are two bridges. What, what, is what, what was this second B? 
Oh yeah, B one because like there's this like pre-chorus oh, that happens. There's one thing that doesn't so, happen at oh, all in the Again, yeah. Song, so yeah. that was like a bridge. This. Oh, yeah. Before the first part. So what? When you're writing songs, yeah. I mean, are you are you making like a conscious decision to have like a sort of not through? It's not really through composed, but like like not repeat. Or is it just because uh, the story of the song doesn't need it? I think the song follows pretty much the exact same way I wrote the last album also, which is that you know let's just keep digging, digging, digging. Once we have like uh, the main hook and the main riff, like what more can we come up with? And I think uh, it, it if I use like very movie style kind of ways of writing it, so there's like lots of setup and then there's payoff. So I always thought that this section, which was like "Give me a lovers, give me a broken," it's something that we didn't end up doing. But the second pre, the second pre-chorus, which is like "Who dropped the bombs on us?" I mean, "Give me a lovers." I thought that you know that would kind of like keep kind of building on that. Also, that's it was a pre-chorus. Also, that's not the second pre-chorus. The second, you know, the the second "Who dropped the bombs on us?" Ah, uh, the second time. It was supposed come. to have like these. You wanted to quote this section yeah, back exactly. in there. Yeah, exactly. But uh. it, it didn't. It didn't feel necessary. Also, this section was important because, like, from a lyrical standpoint, it was supposed to echo what's written on. I think the Statue of Liberty or like Staten Island. It's like. Uh, it, it there's a there's a line that says you know like you know it was talking about all the migrants who who came to America and saying you know give us your bruised and your broken give us all of your and there's a good article on this and I thought I I, I thought that was very like reflective of what Bombay is like we'll just give us all your give me your broken give me your lovers give me all that you'll ever know also I'll take whatever you want uh, I'll take whatever I want from you as well so I really wanted that section in uh, in this part but. Wow. Uh, Two years into uh, uh, playing and listening to this song, and I did not know what that was about. <laughs> so those <laughs> kind of like cat sounds. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's that's just like a, a bunch of slow fades in logic. So the chords were played and like sustained for like yeah. a whole bar, and then whenever we would want to chop it and have that sort of slow down effect happen, we just put a fade. And logic has an option where you can right click yeah. the fade and change it into a slow fade. Yeah. So it gives this sort of like tape stop effect, which is pretty cool and very easy to do quickly. When you're when you're when you're writing, when you're producing, you want to quite often uh, do things that keeps things moving fast, so that you're not getting stuck in the technicality of what you're doing. Yeah, that's how I know JJ is excited about a song when you text me saying. Send the gods, nah. Send the gods. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, like, then cool. because I I don't want to have to think and like figure out. Okay, now what the? Ch- I mean, I can. Uh, but it like, just takes longer. Yeah, it just takes longer. It's like oh, you know, I, I want to get to the part that I'm excited about in that moment, which is the production part at that point in time, because I'm not songwriting. I'm producing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so this sound is basically like I think I think this sound is a mixture of like a couple of uh uh. Omnisphere sounds, which is old school, juicy, and uh, it's a problem. I have to move my car always. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so old school, uh, so old school, juicy. So this was a patch. I think this is a patch in uh, Omnisphere also. But there were a couple of. I had just got the Ultra Nova, and I was like all enjoying it and stuff like that. And so there's one wow, sound that was which a is while ago, huh? yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this this sound has evolved, guys. It's got like it's had a bunch of distortion put on it, bounced, mixed, bounced, this, that, oh. etc. It's yeah. not like one patch per se. It's yeah, yeah. a bunch of patches. <laughs> What line is that? Is this a song? I love the smell of India. No idea. It's a. It was. It was. It was actually. I mean, you see, we all get inspired by something, right? And and when I first heard this song, it gave me a very locked out of heaven feeling. Yeah. So interesting point about the horns also. So uh, Reese and Rohan Rajadaksha had uh, <laughs> done a I bunch of. Them. There was one afternoon where you guys so, took one Sunday to. We to went mess to Rohan's up. old house, yeah, and uh, we just took the song and Rohan, Reese, and I kind of we put Reese in the corner. And we turned him around. And he was like looking like he was punished, <laughs> and uh, we just made him like do like stacks and stacks and stacks of uh, of sacks, and uh, stacks. And I think we ended stacks. up using a lot of that. We ended up using it in very interesting ways, also. So uh, and those were all just demo kind of dry yeah recordings. Yeah, this was also Reese's like uh, Sunday afternoon recording, which is what like. I mean, if I just. Oh. And like, yeah, like there's a pan. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Let's uh, let's go to this uh, pre-chorus with the group vocal. I was so keen on doing this because this is the first part of the song which we reached where I was just like, wow, there's something already different about this song. And even just the way the vocals are are like group sung as opposed to just like being a melodic kind of thing. Hmm. And uh, I remember Adil telling me that this is like a very Mars Volta kind of vibe. Uh, but recently after the whole Daft Punk, you know, retirement kind of message came out and everything, I just re- recalled like one of their songs called Crescendols. And it reminds me so much of that. And that album is very influential to me, Discovery. Uh, and there's a part in, in Crescendols which goes like... Dun, dun, chika, gong, gong. And I was just like, oh my god, that's so similar, and that's so like, it it, it definitely is a influence on on this so. section. Who dropped the bombs on us? Not me. Oh, I have not even started to fight. Oh, nothing's quite like home to us. No fuss. Can't you hear my heart is? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, is the best I, 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 I always hear it and it's so uh. good <laughs> it's so good uh, I, the thing I love about this is that we did it thrice so one there's like a who dropped the bombs on us a melodic one then there's a who dropped the bombs on yeah. us which is just like without key then just mine is atonal <laughs> it's just atonal stuff yeah, yeah. drop the bombs on us what the fuck Not- <laughs> what the hell is that? I don't even know. Uh, I like it. It adds the big. aggression. Of yeah. the it adds yeah. the. Uh, it doesn't it, have it, to be perfect. Yeah, it adds the idea that it's not perfect, basically. Yeah. No, and that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed yeah. to be like a mob kind of uh, vocal and and like Bombay like kind of people ish. surviving or a, a bombing and then asking like. Drop the bombs on us, not me. Oh, I have not even started to fight. Oh, nothing's quite like home to us. No fuss, so why can't you hear my heart is ready to fight? Nice, I love that. Yeah. I also love those little stabs that Ramon kind of put in those. Ba-ba. In the middle, those are cool, like mm. kind of like car horns and stuff. So I, I love that. Man, this chorus that we're going to do now is uh, has gone through a million different iterations. Yeah. And I think the last minute, like we were like kind of set with it. And we were like, cool, now we're going to start mixing the song. And just as that started, JJ was like, man, you know what? I threw in the first idea we ever had and we just brought it back. And I was like, yeah, it was a really good idea. No, I, I remember Adil kept talking about the guitar having to be like, a, was it this song? Uh, <laughs> also, uh, I, just I was talking about in this. So the synths or oh, later, I was just talking about how the, the guitar needed to be like heavier mm. in the song. Yeah. No low end. Why? Anyway, you can hear there's only two elements here, so you can hear how they're interacting with each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yo, that a... shit is so good. I love that. I, yeah, it was it's... like a bounce, up, reverse. Yeah, I don't even know what it is, but it sounds so good. Yeah, it's it's oh, a we bounce. We gotta do a remix of this song. It's up, song reverse. Song. Because, very, very cool. I mean, so everything put together, that kind of gives you this sort of... Ended up doing that funky, cool bass part in the second verse, right? No, we were. Gonna, uh, I was just gonna say, like the bass and drums are the first uh, first time we tracked it, which was probably a, like oh, a yeah. long time ago. It's yeah, the same session in that fact. has made it through the song. But when we played it live, 
I did change up the yeah, second. Yeah, I just started like playing that. like a lot like <laughs> funkier stuff now, and every time like he play, especially the second verse, I'm just like, oh. It's so <laughs> <good>. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, is it no, the same? Fine, I think. Do you hear the uh, one second? There's a mic on the bass amp, and I think we we did this like way before COVID was a thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, this is definitely in a bo- in a bo- some mic involved. Oh, Which basically you use for this? Uh, uh, I use the the Sire five string. Ah, it's yeah. really nice and bright. Like I think for a song like this, it's so Is much. Is it brighter than the Supra you used? Oh hell yeah! yeah. Like yeah. the Supra is quite like roundy and dead compared to this. But because this song has so many layers, like mm. it kind of the bass pops out just right now, despite all of that. Which I everything, really like. Uh, everything things are not seeming to solo correctly. <laughs> 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 I, I like that. My bad. See, the thing is, there was so much uh, stuff going on. I had to freeze tracks. Now, so that's only the bass mic. Nice. And that's the DI. So the DI has like a scoop. The yeah. DI doesn't have too much of the mid, uh, which is where I feel like the bass lives really. Yeah, so the, the mic has that dirt from the mid, which exactly. is really nice. So nice, yeah. So I love it, that. so they both complement each other really well because yeah. then you get like your the full DI spectrum. The DI says to the to the mic saying, "Hey man, great job." Oh, yes, you go away. And then I mean, like any anybody who mixes on Pro Tools will know this Sans Sam plugin. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not even going to get into Stay it. What is that other that uh, Crystal Algae kind of uh, CLA bass? The CLA, yeah. <laughs> <that's>, yeah. <laughs> I mean. This is a CLA bass, but uh, I mean these. I mean this. It's just like it's okay. Yeah, it's doing a lot of compression here. I mean, without it, just holding it in there, then accentuating certain frequencies, bring out. Like I think, yeah, there's a cut at 60 to make place for the kick. This is. Have you side chained anything in this uh, song? I don't think I have. I don't think I have. Okay. Um, Oh Except yeah, for then, the synth in the chorus, yeah, which is very. Yeah. Oh shit! I just did something. I I I cut a lot of the sub frequencies in the bass to allow for the kick to have like a good amount, like like yeah. just to make more space for the kick, and then I tightened the bass with a transient design also and added more attack. Like so, without wait, what's the shortcut? Shift two to put off all the plugins. Okay, anyway, I'll just put them off manually, without. Yeah, a and world of difference. Yeah, yeah. Sure. it's it's still it's still not like ballsy in the low end, but that's because then when you put it with the drums, so you get some clarity, uh, in my opinion. And JJ, you gotta have... talk about you gotta talk about the snare. Man. Huh? There's, there's no snare. This snare there's, that there's is there. No snare. I have no idea what's happened in the snare. Um, well, how did we get this really kind of like, you know, this kind of flat? So there not, is this. Not, not flat, but like you know, very wide sounding. So that's the that's snare. That's a sample. No, no, it's not a sample. Oh, that's a parallel chain. It's the yeah. So it this this I did in Logic. So it's a gated verb on the snare. So it was like a big verb, and then I put, if I'm not mistaken, I put the. Slate, drum gate, or a pro G after it, and I really liked what it was like in Logic when I was working with it. So I bounced it as a separate track, just ah. so that I didn't have to sit and. I mean, that's the other thing, right? If you f- have a sound somewhere which you really commit like, commit that shit. Commit it, uh, you know, and and have it there because yeah. like you're gonna have a shit ton of other tracks anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly, so, yeah. Free up well. DSP space is what the is the main yeah. goal of this. There's like, uh, But that's the that's the snare without anything. We tracked the drums twice for this song. I remember because we yeah. extended the outro. Yeah. 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 Tra- we but that was like there was one really long ago recording. Then yeah, there was yeah, one yeah. where we did it together. Yeah. Uh, one the first one was when uh, Tejas was in the booth recording vocals also. Yeah, I remember. Mm. And so this uh, the snare has two layers to it basically. So this the studio. What we did at the studio, and then there's this sample. Oh, again DSP. 
Uh, how am I doing on DSP? Let me see if I can show you guys what's going on. You should see my yeah. screen right now. It's like just like it's like j- <laughs> jumping. It's like Why? it's a it's like a visualizer right now. You're yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, unfreeze. Let's see what we can listen to. Separate stuff. Oh, I don't know if this EQ. Oh, it is working. Man, okay, so I I have to do this. This is shout out to like UAD stuff. It's just nice. it's just baller. Like I mean, like it basically it it helps to get to a certain point a little bit quicker because uh, they've they've put the tools in a very musical context. So it's very uh, it's fun to use basically. Um, so this is the original snare. Yeah, fine. Ah, that. So you can hear the kick, you can hear the bleed of the kick, and you can yeah, hear yeah. that kind of stuff. And so that's that. And it's a very high tune snare because it so is. after the first time we recorded it, we d- decided that we need to get. And so that's important, like getting, like figuring out the sound that that you want for the song. And I remember always thinking that snare has to cut through. And if it's very deep and got a lot of balls, it's not going to really cut through too well. So that was important, and then yeah, there's a sound not for the kind of song that it is exactly, and then there's this, yeah. So that's got a little bit more low end, low end, yeah. To add, it's so sound. That's what the sound is of the snare, and then add it to no. that. Then there's the gated verb on top, which is there's a lot of the sound of it. Short throw is so good, like that. Yeah. that quick but it, of, yeah it adds gets, that space yeah, and yeah. Uh, honestly like you never i mean you know like whenever you hear a, a drum kit in any room uh there's always some amount of reverberation and the snare is the one that picks up the most kind of ambience on it so like it's so unnatural to hear like an acoustic drum kit i mean unless you're really going for an effect which we've done in other songs yeah. but um yeah. I felt like this song needed to have a little bit more of this kind of vibe. And I think all of the all of the songs we kind of took a a very uh like there's a noticeable effort to to make the bass and the drums kind of stand out a little bit like you know as you know like there's all this Driving kind of, force. of yeah production but since they're all so groove heavy yeah, I'm glad that those have kind of retained their Yeah I mean this quality. is the drums and the bass solo I think I hope uh live drums and bass Got it We spent a lot of time on the groove. I remember. Yeah. This kind of is reminiscent of of the make it happen. Make it happen. Yeah. Uh, space. Yeah. Probably closer to that. But especially, it's almost the same beat here. If I'm not mistaken. Make it happen was 115. And this. What, what was 109. this? What is? This 109. is 109. Okay. Five BPM, six BPM goes along. Oh, I love that reverse. That's yeah. Nice. So yeah, that's uh, okay. yeah. B2. I think That's also this is like the called. first one of the first parts of the song I wrote even before I wrote the chorus. Oh really? Yeah, the bridge for sure. That change That's which goes from C sharp to G to B major. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that was definitely like a, that, that was like one of the first few things and it was like oh this is like a really cool space and I think all of the songs oh. that we've kind of put together over the years have like you know if you divide the songs it's like very like innocence and maturity. It's like mm. all of the like even whether it's you want or 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 you know, uh, Bombay Doors. There's so many songs like even Figure Eight and stuff like that. But um, uh, I think this kind of embodies that a lot more. It's very kind of very innocent kind of thing with very mm-hmm. dark lyrics. Oh uh, no! Not sure. Adil. Yeah. Do you it's like, yeah. I mean, What, it was actually. You can hear, a, it? You can hear uh, it. Yeah, you can hear it. It's there, but it's mixed with your thing as well. It's like both, uh, both parts are all in one. Let's find it. It was a, a patch that I found in Sculpture, which is like a very random, Logic stock plugin, which is actually really yeah, cool. it's pretty cool. Uh, oh, so it's your ah, you're saying it's mixed in here, right? Yeah, it's mixed. I think so. Yeah. I love so, that. It's like that top kind of glittery uh, section of it. Uh, what's really nice is that uh, 
all of these have like such like a uh, very quick movement on it so it's never mm. really like in place it's like it's not like one sound which is like static it's like there's a lot of movement happening yeah, it. yeah. it's very yeah. scapey sounds yeah, scapey very scapey yeah. yes of course and and the, and that was i mean the, the 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 i mean a lot of like 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 uh, i'd say current production is about like like i think we like between the like 80s 90s and the 2000s we went through a phase of like a lot of synths yeah and now a lot of like the sounds that we're hearing is a lot of a lot to do with sampling so you you'll probably like take your own synths also and resample yeah and yeah. then resample them you know that's something we've been doing that for so many al- like even on falling out and a lot of the songs that we've exactly. made before is taking the ingredients of the song themselves and then kind of using that yeah. as as beds and and things like that so that's quick i want to hear the the e to eight or whatever you've done in the drums over here is a quick mm-hmm. the the patch is called little strummer boy <laughs> i think i have the file And we had to add some trap hats. Yeah, where are to, they? To, I can hear the effects of it. I oh, it's really low. It's also. really low. It's just like minus twenty. Yeah, so on. I I don't like it. I mean, like it's not like I don't like it. I love a lot of throwback stuff, and I know there are li- like certain homages and stuff. But I I usually like when we make stuff that is very un. like anything else right now isn't like in the sense that it's not it's contemporary and it sounds like it was produced in 2020 or 2019 2021 mm-hmm. whatever it is mm-hmm. and i think even though there's such an abundance of like trap hats in music right now it was nice to include this little kind of bit to kind of be indicative of the time that we're in otherwise yeah. you know 20 30 years from now everyone looking at instagram photographs with all these filters on it you're never going to what year it was actually in mm-hmm. that shot and i think that th- this these hats are kind of cool uh, in the, doing that the whole thing about this also is uh, what do you call it uh, this this whole section that that that's there in the song it started off as maybe a small in in my head at least like you know like a half time beat like this and i remember s- recording my drums in half time uh, no in double time and thinking of slowing them down oh, in half time that was time. also cool yeah i remember we had tried i did think that work? i don't know i mean i, I think it did but we ended up just going with an easier right? just i'm sure it was marshall uh, if i'm not mistaken this is a yodi marshall direct into the apollo unison free and um, it just sounded great we never felt like replacing anything yeah it sounded I'll just play the bass with this because like Adil yeah. has those nice pop sections which are quite cool as well. The slap, slap pop. <laughs> Yeah. I I know it's slightly different from the, from the previous pre-chorus because we do like an extra kind of line. I remember we got quite like home. da 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 like one of my favorite parts of the song we had to re-record it just because like i wanted yeah. to these chords so it's like the normal chorus would be like and then it goes to the So 
just that that little extra tension is really really nice and then i was obsessed with this uh, e flat chord that is there at the outro and, and jj hated me for wanting to extend the outro but it was so much fun it's always been a fun live thing yeah we yeah, did, just we did like go crazy every time that part happened live which is always like really yeah enjoy crazy. that and then the last Peak minute the song. i think uh i asked reese if he would just do like a crazy kind of like mad solo kind of akin to what jishnu does in the end of slow me down like i wanted him to just kind of go wild oh yeah and i uh, so i sent him this Amazing. and he just sent me back a couple of takes which i comped together and so we've used parts of both takes and then they kind of fuse like one it plays off of each other they trade and then they kind of fuse together just uh yes. kick me out just let me Like horns playing at the same time, Amazing. little Alter Boy detuning it. Love But like, yeah, don't kick me, I just let me. Leave you guys hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. No, but the, but the uh, the this was. I mean, I couldn't let it be normal. I mean, this song yeah. couldn't have like a smooth alto sax solo. It was just not happening. Like, yeah, definitely not. So the and uh, shout out to uh, Ramon also who arranged a lot of the horns. I actually have the first iteration of sheet music for Tejas music like ever because Ramon sat and he uh, yeah. did a lot of this. Yep. And uh, yeah, he did a he did an amazing All job. All here. Yeah. And so like good. that da 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 like catching yeah. Yeah. No I'll never leave a place to die Yeah uh, is yeah. it just me as a song reading so much better after we finish the album like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's much always, better in always. the in the in the you know in the track context. list yeah just context has made this one really like shine now you know like yeah. even more so uh, so quick outro <clears throat> yeah let's go through this uh, this outro uh, i i i really wanted to have this section just cuz we were originally thinking of making this a separate song and like so we oh, will do bobby doz and then call this the outro and then we were just like nah it just belongs together as one track mm-hmm. um i think what was really cool is that this was just taking the essence of the song and making it like and it's so different the worlds of the song like one is this whole um you know really chaotic kind of horns bass and kind of thing and this one is just like this lo-fi uh kind of beat and and Vibhav also did a really good job in visualizing that in the song so yeah i just uh, i enjoyed this is kind of like a you know outro to it it took us a long time to calculate the number of bars <laughs> oh yeah so the interesting thing about this also is that the 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 lyrics that are there in it What is it? They said it starts a quarter note each time earlier because no, no. I mean, we were we were doing all that. I mean, we were the the hits like when Rohan played the keys, he always played them like like a, a 16th note ahead earlier. of the beat. Yeah, and the way we wa- I wanted it was also just that uh, because Origins. the lyrics were not like a full round. Mm-hmm. Every time they would circle back, it would start. It like it would loop at a different section of the of the correct of the because I mean because you're playing like an odd number against an even number. Correct, Ex- that's basically what it is. Yeah, and that's, that's what's what. So yeah, nice so you were you were you had an odd number. Your your thing was in five basically, right? What yeah, is it? Something like that. Five and something. Whatever. Okay, <laughs> yeah. listen to the song and make the calculation, guys. Do the maths. But the numbers are not important. Put it in the comments. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Anyway. Uh, So, uh I'll play the outro. Uh, yeah. There's I mean there's not much to talk about in the outro. We wanted to have a little bit of a lo-fi feel to it because the rest of the song was very bright and in your face and I guess that's Bombay City, but like there's some <laughs> amount of warmth to it also. Uh the city I'm talking about. Uh and to me that's what what I was feeling I, I, I don't agree. know yeah this for me it, it reminds me of like this section reminds me of like when I used to come to Bombay for the first time and reach using the shivneri and reach at night and it would just be dark in dadar and people would be selling boost on a cycle and then Harry and I used to like hang out there so this mm-hmm. reminds me of the night of Bombay nice
Right. So we just uh, got cut off because of uh, internet issues. Um, 2020. Weirdly, or 21. What this has never do? happened while we were actually making the album, but now so as we discuss it, one long year, uh, yeah. one cyclone, uh, cyclone, and and here we are, right? Um, yep. We were discussing the outro. Uh, JJ, tell us uh, uh, about um, about. We were actually process. wait one second. Mm. I know where we were. Mm. We were at trying to go back to listen to a really old version of the track. Right. Let's do which that. we which we which, did find which, which was we yeah. Uh, it was it's in just, your logic bounces. Yeah, did you have yeah. a logic bounce of like? Something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Check it out. One, two, three, four. Well, there are no guitars in this either. No, it's very, very, very rough. Not even started I have to vocals. Fight That's the hardest song that we're talking about, right? Us, Bass no drums and the voice, I guess. Like <laughs> There's no drums wow. here. Almost so like I, I, I said it was very, very rough. This is like royal blood. Did I say it in the name of the file? What does it say? Very, very rough! Exclamation mark. Is this the last, uh, the earliest version of the song we have? Well, I see. Uh, no, there's one earlier one, but that's just a uh, vocal sample. Oh, that's the vocal sample okay. I used for the. Uh, say it again. Nice. You guys are always taking uh, my that, vocals out of context. That is the vocal sample. Hmm. Who thought that's, we'd get there? Uh, I remember that sample. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. This was one of the This was an earlier sketch. It's kind of closer to what we had so yeah so anyway, i do want to hear some to... of the the samples and stuff that we did but the stuff with the outro that is there there's a lot of layers in there and yeah. i really really liked uh, some of the samples that we started plucking from the song to put in there. Uh, they were very yeah. like, it gave me a like um, kind of a Timberland, Justin Timberlake kind of vibe. But it was, it was quite nice. Cool. I'm playing it. do that just end before the end oh gotcha right um <laughs> uh so i i wanted to just maybe solo some of the the just the, the vocals yeah the sample vocal samples are quite cool yeah it's, i feel like it started off as messing around and trying to like make it like a cool uh just a cool outro section yeah it was just which, supposed to sound like sexy and shit, yeah you know? yeah and more and more, I mean, it be, it started off more about the instrumentation, I think, and then it turned into being more about the vocal, and that's when we removed a lot of the instrumentation yeah, because right. there's only the arp and like electric pianos, pretty much like playing hmm. whole notes. Like there's like 
bass and drums which yeah. is like the bass but there's nothing else in the production to be absolutely honest it's we also mean, wanted to be like more minimal with it than exactly uh, than the previous section was so yeah i think that worked yeah. pretty well vocals are just the busiest part so like everything else is just like there to Ex- exactly be a, a canvas for it yeah that's a good point uh and there's <laughs> These are like original live background vocals that you had recorded for live gigs. No, not live. live uh, I, for I, live gigs. Ah, uh, I recorded for live gigs. Yeah, but yeah, isn't we, Malika's vocal in here? Yeah, it's yeah, here. It is, it is, yeah. It's right here. And there's this also where she's singing uh, in harmony with. and so that with the lead vocal because there's a bunch of stuff going on in the lead vocal i mean not a bunch the of stuff the texture of her voice really suits this kind yeah. of style as well and uh, so there's process all of me i'll come to me i'll give me tomorrow all process all of me i'll come to me yeah, so i'll give me tomorrow there's all process all of me i'll come to me sort of um Nice. So that's it's it's soft. Meet tomorrow. But without it, won't pass the test. Won't let me out. Without it, you hear the difference. Give me tomorrow. Won't pass the test. Won't let me out. And then there's 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 what I call the main vocal. I don't know. Now in front of me. This wasn't there till like a I month before the album dropped. The, album the single, <laughs> the single. Sorry, I didn't uh, want to bring back the the bridge. Fair enough. Yeah, 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 so that that that's what it was. I mean, there's this also. There's a vocal sample. Yeah, I love those. Thingy that's happening. <laughs> this is all of the all the production stuff. in a reverby sense but it did i mean i don't know i think there's a lot of harmony in there like yeah it's it's, like it's yeah. quite melodic yeah yeah be. so one interesting thing which which uh, rohan ramanna kind of like pointed out to me i was having a very hard time with getting the kick to be like really powerful so he said instead of sending your kick uh oh, yeah. <laughs> to to the to the bus compressor Just send it directly to the master send channel. it so <laughs> keep uh, send your vocals and your kick directly to a mix bus which doesn't have a compressor uh so that can sit on top and have all the stuff so i like rerouted everything and sent only my electronic kick if you see here goes to the the mix like bus directly out. and yeah. the lead vocals go to the mix bus directly uh so shout out to him for like nice yeah, yeah. giving good, good feedback good, good and shout, advice good shout good yeah. shot mix tip uh mix tip one in you know, i don't know there yeah. but yeah so that that was yeah. that was really helpful um you don't have too much time left here so should we wrap it up is there something specifically you want to talk no, about no i think uh, i think this is it i think uh, this may be our sexiest album <laughs> yeah there's a lot of like cool um like there's a lot of electronic production obvi- obviously on it um maybe just because of the age we're in uh but also also we like the kind of music i mean we yeah, like I love soul that. i think like we've R&B. always liked it but you know we yeah. we've always kind of gone with like a very uh traditional band sound and then supported by production and i think to some extent we still retain that but uh i think the the interesting part of the process for this album has been that there are some songs uh which were started from the ground up on an electronic like production basis and then kind of done you know like so yeah. so that's kind of been interesting and this song kind of feels like a mixture of both like that old school is there the new school is also in it and uh and also while carrying this like very um a strong message about the city that you know uh, as you know we've already spoken about that we live in so i i don't know i i i love this song and i think 
since the album has released or is about to release depending on when you're watching this it it has grown on me a lot like more than you know sometimes you get really like when you get too close to it and now since we have had some time away and now we're just listening to it in context it's it's like yeah. really trying to to shine and and like really makes sense in context of the rest of the songs you know um cuz i i mean i i really think it makes a sense in context of the rest of the songs because like it's it's it was a perfect single to drop before the rest of the album cuz it's like the perfect teaser in a sense yeah If of the watch, entire album exactly because yeah. everything that is there in the album is kind of there in is represented Bombay well Dors, here is yeah. represented here and that's what bombay city is about in a sense also everything that you can expect in the country boom how's is, that for like uh, for a conclusion is uh, and then <laughs> bombay doors in city in the city yeah. nice so <laughs> uh, cool uh, just shout out to again uh, the 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 peeps on this uh, on this track uh, you know uh, who did an amazing job rohan reese ramon uh, james uh, malika everyone has been really really exceptional on this and uh, adil and me you guys <laughs> i mean a little bit okay yeah. okay yeah you guys have, i mean yeah, yeah. I, okay fine we're talking yes. here so it's fine we can thank ourselves you can th- uh, no i i would love to thank you guys okay, okay. Well. Oh. and uh, and finally <laughs> Um yeah well, Sean is, for ma- uh, Sean at Audible Sean, Oddities for mastering Sean it. Sean as well has done a great job and he's done a great job with the rest of the record. Uh so yeah if you haven't heard the song yet this was a weird way to get introduced to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you but should do, by now. But do check it out uh and, and maybe listen to it now with context and everything and it it might just uh you might just hear things that you haven't before. Or um, or or uh, watch uh, listen to it and watch this whole video again. Again, uh, yeah, maybe do that. Maybe do that, and, and, that. and share this with anybody else who you think might be interested in production. Um, sure. Finally, we have more uh, of these production breakdowns happening for the rest of the songs on the album. So make sure you stick around. More stuff uh, ahead. Cool. Thank you, guys. Bye. See you soon. <laughs>